So Mike Burden's story is told in a book called Burden, a preacher, a Klansman, and a true story of redemption in the modern South. And it will soon be a film called Burden, starring Garrett Hedlund and Forrest Whitaker. Here is their story. Watch this. Grew up learning to survive. And that's what I done. As a teenager, Michael Burden moved to the small town of Lawrence, South Carolina. My mother was, my father was, my grandfather was. They was in the Klan. Why wouldn't I in the Klan? Burden met John Howard, a Klansman. He was somebody I tried to look up to. I wanted to learn the Klan history. The light that dispels the darkness, a new parent. Burden joined Howard in the Ku Klux Klan. He taught me the ritual for the cross lighting. I made it to Imperial Nighthawk, which is basically security. I was told to put the fear of God in people, to scare them. In 1996, the two men opened a museum and store celebrating the Klan called the Redneck Shop. This should be put behind us, and we should be able to move forward with our lives. It drew national attention and protests. I can sell anybody just about anything, so I sell them the Klan. We sold T-shirts, robes, Klan paraphernalia, Southern paraphernalia. If it had a Confederate flag on it, we sold it. If it had Klan memorabilia on it, we sold it. We sold everything and anything we could, even down to a membership in the Klan. Two months later, Burden got married, and they lived in the Redneck Shop building. He promised his new wife he would leave the Klan. I was done. I'd had nothing left for the Klan. Now, Burden and his family were homeless. Didn't have the money exactly to buy what I needed and get what I needed, so. We done the best we could in the back of a truck or in motels. Burden befriended a local black preacher, Reverend David Kennedy. Last person I expected to help me, honestly. I love him as a person, as an individual, because he spent money to put us in a motel. He spent money to feed us. He didn't have to do that. I call him a friend. Wow. Please help me welcome Mike Burden and Reverend David Kennedy. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mike, let me start. Let me start with you. We've done a few of these stories of you know former Klansmen who managed to get out. Mm -hmm. But what was it initially that that drew you to the Klan? I, I thought I was going to learn the history, the negative, the positive of the Klan, and turned out for every positive I learned, there was ten negatives that was there to override it. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd learn from it and educate people, but it didn't work out the way I planned. Was there any? I mean. You know, when we think of the Klan, we think of people filled with hate. Mm -hmm. Is that how it felt? Not really. I mean, a lot of people think of that all the time, but most people want to get in there because they want to belong to something that's known. They don't. They don't. They don't really come in hating. You kind of learn it while you're in there, mm -hmm. and that's where a lot of people do make the mistake of it. Before you connected uh, with the Reverend, did you know him? Not personally, but I knew of him. I'd, I'd done some things like keeping up with him, tracking him down, stuff like that. I'd listened to him protest out in front of the store, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you were not a fan of his? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a fan, no ma'am. And I think it goes without saying that the same is true in reverse. You were not a fan of Mike's, no. nor of his museum that no. was very controversial. No. So you, you marry a woman, and she wants, she's an ex-Klan member herself, and yes, she wants you to leave the Klan. Mm -hmm. Why? Honestly, I think it was because I took, it, took, it took me away from her. My mind wasn't on her. My body would get up in the middle of the night. I'd go to visit with people, stuff like that. And she also saw that it wasn't really me. Mm -hmm. That was the main thing. She saw that my heart wasn't in it. As much as it should be. So, but that, but leaving the clan meant losing your home, since your home was in the museum building. It meant and, losing everything. Yeah, and you were you were in business with a fellow clansman. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so you leave your homeless, and then how how do you, Reverend? How do you come into his life? Like, how did you see that Mike was homeless and in need of help? <laughs> That's for you, Rev. Repeat that, please. How did you see that Mike needed help? That he was homeless and he needed help. Uh, I was on my way to the police station to help some, somebody out. And uh, Mike was on the truck. And uh, Judy, uh, his wife, and two children. And uh, the FBI slid, all the law enforcement people were there. 
And he said, uh, Reverend, I know you don't trust me. I, I know you don't care about me. But these people won't even feed us. We don't have any food. We don't have shelter. We just we are just out here. And he said, I need some food. I don't know whether or not he was serious. I said, when I come out from the police station, I'll make sure you have some food. And so one white police officer said, don't feed them. They make our town look bad. I said, our town has been looking bad a long time. It's named after a 19th century slave trader. I said, we can't put all this on those young people, and they need food. So when I came back out... Um, and you helped him. And that, that was the beginning of an unusual and beautiful yep. friendship and change in your life. Yep. When, when we come back, we're going to talk about how this story is making its way to the big screen now uh, and the redemption that would ultimately come. Don't go away. And we're back now with two unlikely friends, former Klansman Mike Burden and Reverend David Kennedy, whose bond has inspired an upcoming film and book. Burden stars Garrett Hedlund and Forrest Whitaker. Take a look at this exclusive clip. What you doing over there? Is this your uncle? Was lynched by the Klan. Aren't you ever worried that's going to happen to you? Should I be? If you truly want to leave the clan, then your first step is admitting what you've done. Wow. Also joining us now are the film's writer and director, Andrew Heckler, and the author of the book, Burden, Courtney Hargrave. Welcome to you all. <laughs> so, Reverend, let me start with you. So you, you help Mike, you help his family, you help get them clothed and, and food and so on. But then Mike made a shocking confession to you, which was what? Uh, Judy told Mike, if you're going to marry me, and I want to give a shout out to Judy, uh, you're going to have to tell Reverend Kennedy everything. And she left my office, and Mike said, I don't know how to tell you. I said, just tell me. I, there are some words I just don't know how to tell you. I said, give it to me raw. And you're all right, you're in my office. And don't worry about it. And he told me he had planned to assassinate me. And he told me He two, planned to assassinate you. Uh, there were two occasions I was shocked that he knew where I was on those two occasions. He said I had the trigger ready to pull it. And uh, I heard him and told him everything is all right. We in God's house. Wow. Notwithstanding that, you continued to help him. And... Did he get you out of the hateful ideology? I mean, did he pull you out of it, Mike? He was part of the plan to get me out of there, but it was it was love that pulled me out of it. What it was mean? love. It was the heart. His heart. All of our heart. There was considerable blowback to the Reverend at his church. Some people didn't believe in this instant conversion. They were like, this guy, how could you? which is one of the reasons why, Courtney, you found the story interesting and, and wrote about it. I mean, what was it about the story that appealed to you? Uh, so I think clearly the unlikely friendship between uh, Reverend Kennedy and Mike Burden is interesting enough on its own. I think there were so many things that moved me as I embarked on the research for the book. And part of what I found so compelling was that Reverend Kennedy had been so forceful in town trying to protest the shop, what it meant, what it meant for African Americans in particular. The Klan to, Museum To see shop. this kind of thing sold in town. And the original reaction was mostly positive and people wanted to help in his protests. And then so quickly, apathy sets in. And people feel like, I would rather not be uncomfortable. I would rather this man not draw attention to the problems. And then all of a sudden, he starts to um, experience some blowback because he seems like the troublemaker rather than understanding what it is he's fighting for. It is crazy when you think about, like, a Klan memorabilia shop just sitting there on Main Street, like, in, in relatively modern-day America, right? I mean, so, Andrew, you're making this film. You've had this, the rights to this for, what, 20-plus years? It's about 20 years. And now you get Forrest Whitaker uh, and Garrett to sign on. And, first of all, when's this coming out? So we're going to come out uh, late this year, top of next year. And what do you think the message of the film is? 
You know, it's it's pretty simple. I mean, the when I first heard the story in 1996, Klansman opens Redneck Shop and KKK Museum in a small southern town, I couldn't believe it. Right. Wait. Uh, whoa. Lots I mean, to unpack it was, there. It was nuts. And I, I, I took that. But then I saw an article about eight months later that said Klansman sells Redneck Shop and KKK Museum to Black Baptist Minister. Because the I, Reverend, through a series of events you'll hear about, now owns the KKK yeah. Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Go ahead. But, but I picked up the phone and I called the Reverend and I went down there and I spent a lot of time with these people and realized that, that they're heroes. You know, these these people, Reverend Kennedy and Mike Burden and Judy Burden and, and Reverend Kennedy's congregation, they're heroes. And uh, you know, the message of the movie is fairly simple. It's to paraphrase Martin Luther King, which is, you cannot turn an enemy into a friend through hate. You can only turn an enemy into a friend through love. And this is the example. <laughs> Well said by all of you. Listen, thank you for coming on. I know we only just scratched the surface. You should buy the book. And you should definitely go see the movie. And all the best to you guys. Thanks for being here. Thank you. We'll be right back.